Yeah. So, so what is your type of woman, and are you single right now? Uh, I'm not single right now, but I like him. I like him pretty. I like, I like him pretty in the face, thick in the waist, though. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Little big I'm, booty. I'm yeah, I like that. <laughs> What's up? It's Lip Service. I'm Angela Yee. I'm Gigi McGuire. I'm L'Oreal. And we have a newbie on Lip Service. Uh-oh. What's yeah, up? I'm Tyler Leslie. I guess this is where I'm supposed to introduce myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm fresh, off of the, uh, fre- fresh out of the valley back on the West Coast. Tyler Leslie. Okay. Good to see y'all. That's a welcome, nice outfit welcome. you have on. Yeah. Oh, this I just, uh, I just threw it on, you know. Oh, this a little, little something I just threw on. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Tyler, you I have such an it. interesting story to me because it's not like you, yeah. your whole life was like, one day I'm going to be an actor. And no. that's not how things happen for you. No. So, um, you, know, my, uh, you know, my way into the game was a little bit unorthodox for sure. Um, I came up uh, right outside of Philly. I went through a string of failures. Um, thought I was going to be, you know, playing football on Sunday in the NFL. Didn't work out like that, you know, but I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from those losses. But, um, you know, when I went through that, those, those string of losses, I moved out west just because I kind of wanted to start fresh. I was about 23 mm-hmm. when I graduated from college. And uh, I came out west and actually uh, I kind of just found my way um, into the gym. My cousin was a, a boxer. So I was just hanging around the gym. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I found I, I got a person kind of finessed a personal training job. And then, um, you know, L.A. <laughs> is very saturated. Yeah, L.A. is very saturated with people in the business. So you know, just hanging around it for a few months, probably like maybe month two or three, someone had asked me to audition. Um, this is probably about 10, audition for something small, and this is about 10 years ago. Um, but I had booked that role, and that was kind of the start of me being intrigued by something new. So, I, you know, at that point, I started to apply myself. You know, I got, uh, you know, I got the headshots, put myself into an acting class, and, you know, you did the initial steps that actors try to, you know, do. And uh, 10 years later, this is what I've been, um, you know, this is what I've been applying myself to, and this, this is my passion. I found it in an unorthodox way, though, for sure. I actually found out that you was involved in the boxing after you called out old boy that knocked out Nate Robinson, Jake Paul. Yeah, old boy uh, don't want none of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I really would love to see you knock him out. Um, <laughs> what knock do we have out. to do? <laughs> what do we have happen. to do to make that happen? Like, is there a petition you- we can sign? And Tyler, yeah, you, you know better that. knock him out because that would right. be awful. It's going hard <laughs> hey, for you. Hey. I'm doing yeah, this for yeah. P-Valley, and then now it's the Tyler <laughs> challenge. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nah, you ain't got to worry about that. But um, listen, if there is a petition, I'll be, we'll, we'll be the first to sign it, us four right here. So I appreciate Let's go. you ladies, for, for nice. being with me. But um, yeah, man, you know, I, uh, for, for whatever reason, you know, I couldn't really articulate it, but for whatever reason, I, I didn't like what I saw. You know what I mean? And, me neither. You, and, you know, to, to, see him, to see him do that, first of all, I got to give my hats off to both, both of those men. You know, I guess we can call them fighters, even though they're not professional fighters. But they're 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 stepping in the ring as if they are. So hats off to them for doing that. But it's like when you know the game, you know if that was a sanctioned bout, that would never go down, right? You don't have heavyweights fighting middleweights. Right. You know what I mean? But but because this is like a YouTube type of thing, and no one's really going to check Jake for doing that. You know, they're just in it for the money. They they allowed it to go down. But you know, mm-hmm. me being a part of that sport and having the the background to go ahead and and do that. Um, you know, I think I think he needs to pick on someone who likes to fight back, someone who wants to, you know what I'm saying, step in there and ice him real quick. So I know um, that's right. you know, you know, you know what's funny though? I, I was popping I was popping my uh hold on, are we allowed to are we allowed to like be ourselves, are we allowed to curse. Absolutely. Yeah, anything you want. Okay, please. So, okay. so I was I was popping my shit the other day and um, you know, I had noticed that he came out maybe a few days after he started calling everybody out. You know, I had noticed. I had noticed he didn't call. He didn't call me out. So, um, if he's smart, if he's smart, he'll just let it go. Cause you know, if he sees the dollar signs and steps into the ring, he might uh, <laughs> he might see his first loss. I don't know. Has he lost yet? I feel like he's been doing this for a little bit. No, he only fought like four fights, I think. But I believed you when whatever you said you was gonna do. I believed yes. you was gonna do that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, I got, I got the um. You know, I got the I got the the family like the um the boxing camp that would help me prepare for that. I think I think where those people get into trouble is that they don't take it seriously. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'd seen a, I'd seen a little bit of Nate Robinson's camp, and he kind of you know he he didn't he didn't look like he was really prepared to go in there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I don't want to put it all on him. It's really it's really the camp's job to get the fighter ready. So one thing that I'm comfortable with is you know having again you know, the cousins, the family, having the boxing camp to really prepare me for something like that, you know, outside of what I'm, you know, normally ready to do anyway. 
But um, you know, we'll see. People we'll don't see understand how long three minutes is until you're three minutes trying to fight and stand up in the yeah. ring. Three right. minutes tough, is a long right. damn time. Yeah, it's a it's a really tough it's a really tough sport. That's why they always you know they have that saying you know you play basketball, you play football, and you don't play boxing. Mm. You don't. Yeah, yeah, you don't. Can I so, ask you um, something about when you were a personal trainer to flashback yeah. to that? For sure. How many of your clients would you fucking oh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, question. So, no, let, 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 that let, has okay. to happen. Right. <laughs> I was like, let me get some ask, water. <laughs> I was going to ask how many women would hire you just because they want you look you good. To, yeah, you know, to train I, my I, body. I, I, <laughs> you know that's not that's not for me to say because I don't really know. I never asked them. But here's what I did notice. I did notice that about probably like 90 percent of my clients were it was a, it was a female based. Um, but that, you know, that, that was <laughs> but that was for me. But that was also like even if I look at you know I, I was mentioning my cousin who's a boxer. His name is Leon. He owns a uh, a few uh, gyms out here. They're called Glove Works. Um, he actually owns one in uh, in New York too. But even even the, the the client base at the gym is like seventy five to eighty uh, percent female. So it's like you know it's okay. interesting. Some a, a sport like boxing, how it attracts um, you know like the ladies like that. You know they're they're. I see the ladies in there kicking ass and whatnot, but um, you know, to get back to your to your question, it's probably like ninety percent of the uh of my client base was female, though. Sure. They want to make was, sure they know how to knock bill. a bitch out, so that I used to uh, do sure. boxing for that purpose. Though I think women yeah. do that also, because when I did it, because I wanted to be able to defend myself in case something happens. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I know that you could be walking by yourself, somebody comes up on you, you got to fight somebody up. You want to at least know how you What's are able to defend yourself. And I was way better. Me and DJ Envy did it together, and I was definitely yeah. way better than him. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, a, it's a tough thing. You know, I got a lot of um, I have I have lady friends, and you know, say if we're um. Well, pre-COVID, you know, back when we were all, you know, if we were out or something like that or someone was going to their car, you know, I would make sure they get to their car, you know what I'm saying? Or I would make sure they get out or in, in the venue properly. And, you know, a lot of it was just because of that. Like, you know, I I'd kind of, mm -hmm. I kind of empathize and feel what, what Angelie was talking about because, you know, it's just, it's just a scary place out there if you don't know how to defend yourself, especially for, um, you know, a woman like solo just, you know, running around the world by herself. So right. I I, uh, I implore everybody to take a couple of lessons too because it's always nice to um you know, it's always a peace of mind to know how to how to put them together you know. Angela convinced me to go to Rumble for something with Kevin yeah, Hart. Yeah, we did Rumble. Yeah, but it was did. a midnight boxing class, and I was, was so fun. tired because it, it was did you late. Enjoy it? It was, yeah, it was nice. It was yeah. nice, but I wanted a drink at the same time. I'm like, wait, it's like 2 a.m. <laughs> that doesn't go together, uh, Maria. <laughs> it seemed yeah, like drinking you're... time, not boxing time to me, but yeah, I get you're, it. You're, you're dedicated for getting in there at 12 a.m. Sure. Thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you an only child? I remember I read that somewhere. Yeah, yeah I am an so only you child. And you said, you said you grew yeah. up uh, outside of Philly. I'm actually <laughs> from Philly, so what okay. part? specifically yeah, so, I probably so, know. Yeah, so I was um uh, I was born in uh Abington. Oh, okay. And then, you know, I was raised in like really Bucks County. Bucks oh, nice. County area. So I bounced around Bucks County, um Doylestown, Warrington, Warminster. Mm -hmm. um, he was in the white part. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Bucks County, <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Bucks County is definitely um like the white area. I had, you know, so it, it was interesting. You know, I I I grew up um probably until like middle school, it was all white. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I'm a bi I'm a biracial man. So I was always growing up, I was always, you know, too black for the white kid. You know what I mean? I remember, I remember in second grade, uh, one of the best friends, uh, Peter Samuels, and we were riding home on the bus together. He said, uh, he said, hey, Tyler, um, do you know, do you know what a nigger is? And I said, um, and I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, again, you know, growing up in that white area, I was not privy to this information yet. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? I didn't know, you know, again, only child to it. It's like I had a big brother or a big sister to like school me to what was going on. So right. I was like, um, you know, no, no. Um, and he was like, uh, well, that's what you are. And then, you know, he, no. he got off the bus, went home and it was interesting. It was like, he was really, he was really informing me. He wasn't trying to be he, he racist or but he wasn't trying down to hear. Right. Exactly. That's just how that area was, you know? And mm. then I, grew, and then I got older and then I, um, um, I went to, I, I lived in Vegas for a random year, but I, I moved out there in like ninth grade. I went to Foothill and all of a sudden the whole school was black. You know mm, what I mean? And now difference. all of a sudden, I was, I was like, I was the light, I was the light skin. You know, what now I mean? you're so too I was white like, for the black kids. On, that, was, that was, was my life. Too white for the black kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I had an interesting, um, I have an interesting like, like perspective growing up in that, in that realm. 
you know. You get but, into, uh, into yeah. all black like school, they call me white boy. You like, what yeah. the yeah. hell? Yeah. I just was a nigga. Yeah. That's something that we can yeah. unfortunately all semi relate to. Angela's half Asian, L'Oreal's mm-hmm. half Puerto Rican. Yeah. Both my parents are mixed, so we. But Gigi was can. white when she was younger. I was Tell at the point. truth. I was at a point of time. It wasn't when I was younger. It was in my early 20s. I went through this phase where I really connected with white people. And yeah. <laughs> so I had a connection. I had a, I had a serious connection with white people. And I, and I was listening to rock music. And yeah, I was, what was that it with was, you? It was my surroundings. I was dancing at a... I was dancing at Delilah's in Philly. Oh, okay, I know what that is. Yeah. yeah, I was dancing at Delilah's in Wait, Philly. Wait, hold on. Slow down. Tyler, you said you know where that... So you've been to Delilah's? Delilah's, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Delilah's is like the, yeah. the premier gentleman's club in it's Philadelphia. Right next, it's right next to the... um. It, it's it's like near Old City, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, right next, next to Penn's Landing. Yes, that's the right yep. Didn't you have yeah, to know true. every strip club to do your role in Peeve Out? No, I'm joking. I just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, he did a lot of research. So he took it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. He took it serious, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a method actor, so, you know, I had, I had to throw some wonder <laughs> around, you feel me? <laughs> are you good Speaking at throwing... Of, I was going to say, are you good at throwing money in a strip club? Because I feel like that's also something that, like, takes some time to It is, you got to have I'm experience. Not, <laughs> I'm not good at it. Yeah, Gigi tried to teach me. Yeah, I'd be throwing the whole thing and it'd be pumped up. She make it yeah. sprinkle. Speaking of um, <laughs> P-Valley, I am actually very close friends with Virgo and Simone, who played Extra okay. Extra, and, and also yeah. um, Brazil... Brazil, mm-hmm. we all worked at Magic City together. Um, oh, nice. And Virgo was one of my really, 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 really closest friends in my entire She's life. I, I love her. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're actually uh, currently casted on a reality show on WeTV together. So right, um, she literally just left my house and she'll probably be here before we end. So if she comes in, I'll tell, I'll tell her. To oh, yeah, tell her to come to us. Hey, what's up? What's <laughs> yeah, up? yeah, yeah, yeah. But they Is talk so how highly. Really, how real is, how real is Pea Valley for your, like, when you watch the show? Because I know Coming you're from into me? it too. Well, um, of course, since I'm so close to them and uh, Simone, actually, she was the one who ended up being pregnant at the end, you guys. Um, yes. she's the She was actually working behind the scenes to help authenticate the script, so to say, mm-hmm. um, as well as being an actress, um, dancer. So, um, and with, it was four girls in total who were actually really strippers in real life. So they were able to help, you know, make sure that everything went the way it's supposed to go. Um, I absolutely love everything about the show. Y'all know that. Um, I was like OD obsessed. And it was, wasn't was just the fact that I'm a former stripper and that my friends were acting on the show. But it was really authentic. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, that's not Atlanta strip clubs. But it wasn't supposed to be. It was Mississippi, you know. Yeah. So like the slang and, and, and everything and the words and everything that they use and the way that they went about things, um, to me, it was perfect like it was really 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 good and i, I love the show but Gigi ods like when i tell you yes. every time i go to her house if i go to her house right now p valley is on i'm like you're watching this again I love everybody this show, but watch it. she watched it she must have watched it 50 times the whole i probably thing. did i probably did no cap yeah and tyler how excited, how excited, how excited, excited was it new mm-hmm. yeah how exciting was it for you, Tyler, to be casted on that show? Because obviously when you were first filming it, you never know how successful something's going to be. No. Yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, first of all, it's a blessing to be, to have a job. You know what I mean? We all know what okay. it's like to be, to, to work in this entertainment industry. It's a very fickle one. You know, sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're cold. And it's like, you know, to have a steady job is always a blessing. So it was, it was nice to, it was nice to work. Um, but I think, you know, a show like this is probably something I would watch even if I wasn't on it. You know what I mean? It's really got, it's really got its thumb on the pulse of our culture. So, I, you know, I remember when I got the call for it, I was, you know, I was super excited because here I was being able to work on something that was really, it's, it's very, um, it's very like deep, difficult material. You know what I mean? But those types of uh, roles, that type of material is what really, you know, strengthens or, or sharpens your tool as an actor, right? You really get, get to work on your chops, they call it. Um, so I was really excited to do that, but it's also, you know, as exciting as it is, um, working on stuff like that, it's like a daunting task. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you had just mentioned how, you know, authentic it is. And that's, uh, that's the really tip our hats to the creator and the writer, Katuri Hall. Now she's mm-hmm. from Memphis, right? Um, mm-hmm. she's also, she also went to Juilliard. So she's also mm-hmm. like a very, um, she's all, she's, 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 she's kind of like academic with the way she, 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 um, you know, writes, writes her art, if you will. So she'll be the first one to tell you if you're doing it wrong. And if, you, and if you're not getting it, you won't, you won't be there. You know what I mean? It was, it was a very difficult 
Um, I don't know. I mean, everything is difficult when you go in the audition room. But it was a very long auditioning process. It was probably over a span right. of like five or six months, maybe maybe going in the Ooh. room six, six, seven times. You know what wow. I mean? Working on working on different things here and there. You know, um, and then to and then to get that the the dialect down. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. um, even before we went on set and we had dialect coaches, you still have to try to go into the audition room. And, and and still try to hit that twang. Yep. And coming right. from, give it coming to from them. up top. They get what they're looking yeah, for. Yeah, so coming from up top, you know, and from the Northeast, it's like, I, I'm, I was not, uh, I was not well-versed with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, it, it, was, it was nice to go through the gauntlet and come out on top because they're really like family now. You know, I'm in the Pea Valley yeah. universe now. Yeah, and then there's not many really men on the show, and then you have a lot of beautiful women around you. So are yeah, they sure. like, are you, do you have them coming at you left and right? Or Because I know it happens in real life. I see your comments and stuff like that, <laughs> and the women are going crazy over you. So is that something that you dealt with on set, like where they was getting, hitting on you here and there? Extras um, or anything? Yeah, listen, it was, um, I mean, it was definitely <laughs> very aesthetically pleasing. You know, it's nice, it nice to be on the set. Good environment. <laughs> Good day at work. <laughs> Every day. Bunch of, absolutely. A bunch, <laughs> bunch of beautiful women, a bunch of beautiful people, you know, black people doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I will say that, you know, everyone on the set was, was kind of like, kind of like myself. I'm a very driven, Professional. Focus, focused person. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I, I've never really been like a victim of the flesh like that. Not when it comes to like getting your money and, and, and like furthering your dream. You see what I'm saying? I take my mm-hmm. legacy very seriously. So when it comes to, you know, something frivolous like that, you know, I can kind of let it rub, you know, run off my shoulder. Um, and everyone mm-hmm. around was, was pretty much like that. It wasn't like, it wasn't anything crazy. Um, you know, we were, we were linking up after like, you know, like to have after work drinks though. So we was all turned, you know what I'm saying? We were mm-hmm. getting turned down there. You know what I'm saying? Smoking, big drinking. It's like, everybody was mad fun down there. Um, mm-hmm. But in terms of like the extracurricular stuff, like the fraternization, you know, everyone was pretty like, like very professional. Right. You know, do you have, have to nice ever stop yourself? Thing. If you feel like there is a little bit of chemistry, because that does happen in real life. Do you ever have to like yeah. kind of like put a block up and just stop yourself? You know, how do you do that? Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's it's um, it's a it's a great thing you touched on because this is something they don't teach you in an acting class. Right. Is is walking that line, you know, because on one side you want the chemistry to be real. Right. Because we're portraying mm-hmm. real life here. We're trying to capture those moments. It's almost like capturing lightning in a bottle. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. can't capture lightning in a bottle if you're scared of going around the lightning. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you have to you have to know how to, you know, again, compartmentalize some of that energy. It's like, you know, you want to walk to the edge, but you don't want to go over it. You know what I mean? So again, right. even teetering that line right there is something that it's a skill set to be developed, you know? Yeah. So so what is your type of woman and are you single right now? Uh I'm not single right now, but I like them. I like them pretty I like, I like him pretty in the face, thick in the waist, though, you know. Damn. Yeah. Big, 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 big yeah, booty. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> but, um, I mean, that's, just, that's, what, that's what I'm drawn to. You know, I, I, uh, I will say that I've seen, you know, I've seen a beautiful woman in every race, shape, color, size, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, so it's like, I don't think that, you know, I don't think beauty knows any boundaries, you know. But what I'm drawn to, you know, is, is uh, you know, definitely a little more curvy. Did you try to um, tell them, did you finesse getting any of your songs on P-Valley too, by the way? Since right. You're awesome. yeah, so, you <laughs> it know, makes was, sense. You got yeah. some strip club songs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I appreciate that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to, so they're definitely going to be on season two. I nice. Wanted to appro- I wanted there we to go. Approach- yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. See, but so you don't like got to sleep hey. with Uncle Clifford for it to get oh, played. Right. Right. <laughs> 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 shout, out, shout out to my boy shout out to my boy Nico. he's a cool dude but no nah, i ain't sleeping i ain't sleeping while i'm clipping for that um you know i'm um i've always wanted to be taken seriously with my art no matter what it is you see what i'm saying i never wanted to you know i understand networking and you know you can you can get a favor here and there i understand that but like i've always wanted to be taken seriously as an actor you know i also I, and, I, and i i see the same i want the same respect as a musician too so it's like i don't want to and I also understand people's babies, right? Well, sometimes when you do something for the first time, I don't know if you remember your first, you know, your first uh, hosting gig or, you know, I, I remember some of my first gigs, but, but like this was Couture Always Hall's awful. baby. You see what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so she, so I just wanted to respect what she wanted to do. She had a very specific way. She wanted to craft her soundtrack. So I didn't want to be like bombarding her. I kind of wanted to, you know, garner my own audience first. I wanted to drop my own stuff first so that Smart. it kind of, it kind of, it kind of worked organically as opposed to, 
you know, hey, I'm just another rapper trying to put my stuff on. Even though I'm Diamond on the show, it's like, you know, I wasn't really known yet for my music. So I wanted mm -hmm. to drop, I wanted mm -hmm. to drop more and create my own buzz first so that, you know, it was easy when I did it. And, you know, we've right. talked, we've talked lots about, you know, getting my music on the soundtrack. So it's already, it's a go for season two, but I kind of nice. just wanted to work it that way, you know? Congratulations. Do, do, yeah. Thank you. Do people that. call you Diamond? Cause I know sometimes you get caught in your character <laughs> and that's kind of a name right there. So do right. people write yeah, down a, like that's Diamond? A dope name. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it was always Benny for a long time. Yeah. And now, like, From know, head now to head all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, like, the, the, uh, I have some friends that really get upset when when their their supporters um, don't know their name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I try to tell them all the time. It's like it's like sometimes right. when you got when you got a hit, it happens with music all the time too. Sometimes you won't know the rapper, but as soon as you hear the song, it's like, oh, that's you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just know your work first, and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a blessing to have that. So yeah. it's like, you know, someone call me Diamond. I, I fuck around, answer to the name, like, hey, what's up? Because that means you're doing a good job, I think. Yep. Yeah, like, absolutely. Right? Yeah. We're so entranced yeah. in that character that that's all we see. Right. When we see Amari um, Hardwick. Amari um, Hardwick hates when people call, call him. him Ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He can't stand yeah, that. He hates that. Yeah. 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 And then, and you know, no, Jaleel White does not like being Urkel. Well, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who would? But <laughs> Diamond, the way that Diamond is on the show, Diamond's he's fly. Like, like, he's a, you know what I mean? He's the best. Dude yeah. on the show for real. Mm -hmm. No, so to me, that. that's like a compliment. No, that's I appreciate awesome. that. And you know, I remember, I remember, you know, again, just to go back to like, you know, my string of failures coming from the East Coast, man. I just remember, you know, trying to get any job. And I remember trying to do something new. You know, here I was, I was going to do this, this acting thing. You know what I mean? People would look at me like I was crazy, you know? <laughs> so, no, for real. It's so, like, I just remember, I'm not too far removed from a space where no one supported me. Mm. You know what I mean? So when I have these people running up to me here and there, you want a picture or, or whatever, you call me whatever. It's like, you know, I see through all of it for what it truly is, which is support, right. you know? Mm. That's interesting because people will look at you and be like, he'd be all right. He's cute anyway. So right. it doesn't matter. Because I'm sure <laughs> all the time, like growing up, you didn't have problems with women. And I'm sure you've always been like, have you always been a popular person? Because like you said, you've had some losses, but people probably like, he'll be okay. Yeah, you know, I, I went through uh, I went through phases. You know, when I was growing up, <clears throat> when I was growing up, uh, you know, in Bucks County, and I was I was like the only black kid. It was definitely I was definitely made to feel, you know, it was it was definitely like a like a negative, like ugly aesthetic type of thing. You know what I mean? So I was definitely like growing up, and it was like an ugly thing. I was like the ugly duckling. But you know, all of a sudden I hit like high school, or even like a middle school, and like people started getting sexually active all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And now, and then it started changing. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And then, then I was kind of like, you know, kind of like what the girls liked a little bit, even though it was new for them. You know, they had never like been with like a black guy or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then I started playing sports. Right. And oh, then I was like, you know, I got, a, they I got, got him right there. Yeah. yeah, It's yeah, all yeah. over. Ooh, that got you there. Yeah. So it's interesting <laughs> to see how they changed, even when like I was running for touchdowns. Now all of a sudden I was like the, like the popular running back. So like it was different. So I went through phases of it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so it is, you know, it is what it is. What age did you lose your virginity at? 14. Okay. So, I was feel like that's so it had to be to, yeah, was it to a white girl? Yeah. yeah. Was it to okay, a white so, girl? So no, this was actually when I was in, this is actually when I went to Vegas mm -hmm. and it was actually, um, um, it was actually to a, a junior in high school. So it was like, it was like 14 and like 14 and 17. Mm. Oh, wow. um, which at the which at the time you know so i'm i'm 33 now so 30 30 and 33 is not a big deal but 17 and 14 <laughs> that's really a is. huge deal you yeah. it's, actually, it's actually criminal yeah yeah it is oh, what's yeah, her name I, so I, we I, could I, go I, send the police to go lock her up nah, no, yeah, joking, I, I, I'm joking. I, I, no no names no names <laughs> no names no names no names <laughs> <laughs> but it was um it was it was it was very premeditated we had uh we had kind of planned it out the night before and it was actually at school underneath the um the bleachers uh, you know, like the, not the bleachers but like the steps we had a portion um we have a portion where uh like some of the classes were over at the college so we would go walk across the street and like if you if you think about like underneath the stairwell there's kind of like that that space the empty space so, you know, we brought, yeah like we brought the blankets and like you know what i'm saying like we uh, planned it all out <laughs> That's she, knew romantic. She, was, she knew what she was doing though was so this like after you know, school <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was in between school. We had like a little dead, like a dead, a dead spot. Oh, I During was, at, I was at lunch. school. I was at lunch. So yeah, you yeah. clearly didn't Damn. bathe after. There wasn't no hot rag after that, right? There wasn't a hot no, washcloth on the balls yeah, after that no session. Yeah, there wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't nothing proper after that. You know what I'm saying? Cool, it was your pants like, up. 
you pull your pants so you just up, pull your like, pants up and keep it moving. So like, y'all just smelling no, like sex was, for the rest wait, of the day. You smelling condom. Smelling like sex the rest of the night. Yes, I did. Oh, so I brought, I brought the condoms she, and she brought the towels. And she, actually, no, she brought the condoms. She knew what she was doing. I brought the towels. And, uh, you know, that was it. <laughs> y'all were fully prepared. We was prepared. We, we did. She knew what she wanted. <laughs> did she know that you were a virgin? No. Because I definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's like that J. Cole song. I uh, forget what it's called. Uh, yes. But, like, I was, I was definitely, you know, I'm spitting my game. And, you know, because I didn't want to come off like, you know, a lame. You know what I mean? I wanted to, I wanted to make my girl feel good. And, you know, um, I had was to, it, I had to was cap, it cap, cap it up a little bit. You think it was, yeah, it was obvious, obvious that you it, were a virgin? It was obvious. It was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so it was like two <laughs> seconds? Like, explain nah, how she like, had so it. We need it details. Wasn't no two seconds now. It was no two seconds. Wrong hole. Sure wrong hole. Wrong hole. You know, I just remember. Um, I remember. Uh, I remember her. I remember her getting getting on top, and she was like, oh. "I remember all of a sudden she was gonna like take control of it." You know what I'm saying? She okay. So she she got on top. She started doing a thing, and um, you know what I'm saying? It, oh, wasn't was like, it was a few minutes. It was a few minutes. You know what I'm saying? My rhythm was off though. This is really dirty towel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you probably was. Um, you probably didn't even have it in. It was probably in between her thighs. This is one of the best <laughs> tell us your virgin story in lip service history. I just want to add. This oh, really? is, we really? ask a lot of people that question, and this is like one oh, of the really? best answers. Yeah, this is I'm funny. I'm loving this. I, 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 I probably should have lied. I'm keeping it too real with y'all. No, no, did you no, did you sleep with her great. again? Yeah, did you, you know get a second funny? chance? Yeah. So yeah, I did get a second chance. It was much better the second time. Well, you guys in the bed the second time, or at least on the couch. <laughs> yes, we were um, we were in the house. So we weren't okay. on the bed, but we were like, you know, we were on the couch floor area, kind of bouncing back okay, and forth. Okay, good. Um, but then it was, um, then she was, um, she, was little, she was a little promiscuous. So she was bouncing around after that. So she kind of... So you was cool like, on that after that. <laughs> so she was, uh, no, I remember she went to, like, she went to an upperclassman. So she was junior. She started messing around with a senior now. So it was like 14 compared to 18. I didn't have no shot. He had a car and everything. I, I couldn't uh, do that. She but was you know all what's over. Interesting? You know what's interesting, though, is once I hit that TV, she called me up. This oh, is like, this is hey, like, this is like, yeah, hey, big head. This is like, this is like 10 years later now. So we were both like big out of high school. Um, you know, I had graduated from college, but, um, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting how relationships always continue to redefine themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did you fuck her again 10 years later? Be honest. No, yes, no, you did. No, 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 no. You need that revenge. <laughs> you did. No, I know you did. No, no, no I did. I, honestly, honestly, no. She can't. She can't. No, she can't do that right now. She's a uh, guys are vindictive. Uh, Mary, like that, what, they, what they'll do is they're so vindictive. They'll try to like make you fall in love with them to get back yeah. for the hurt that you caused mm -hmm. them from mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, guys always, and I, I, I ain't gonna snitch on my guys, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about myself. Um, you know. I always try to, you know, we try to play off that, that uh, you know, that first puppy love like it ain't nothing. Because truly in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's, it's really nothing. But, you know, if you, right. if you take that moment for what it is, you know, it kind of redefines the way you have an outlook on life or even relationships. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does have an impact, you it's know, It's significant forward, to even, say the least. You know, exactly. Even though we don't, may not think about the individual, you know, that experience is significant. Mm -hmm. you know? I just picture you yeah. in the hallway against the locker, looking down while she's with another yeah, guy. It's like sad. a no, no, no. no beard. Yeah, no beard. Yeah. Little Jerry Curl, sad. Little Jerry Curl. I used a little water. You probably were scrawny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big, yeah, big scrawny back then. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how she got your so number. You lanky. I'm trying to figure out how she got your number 10 years later, child, because I know it, it was wasn't the same. the same, so you oh, gave it, it to her. Um, I don't know. Facebook. It was, um, <laughs> yeah, she, she hit me on, uh, I think it was like IG or Facebook. Got you. Know, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <yeah. laughs> it was Facebook. You already know. Facebook how does she look? Link. How does she look? How does she look now, though? Compared yeah. to high school? N not the same. Yeah, we're just going to say mm -hmm. that. She don't look the same. But, um, you know, <laughs> but, you know, uh, like, life happens and it's like stress mm -hmm. is real and circumstances happen. And, um, you know, people's outlook and perspectives change. So I, mean, I just see her differently now. She was like, just calling to tell you, you got a 10-year-old son and you need to take care of <laughs> No, 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 no. Even at 14. No, I Tyler. Did you, did you practice putting on a condom before the first time you actually put one on? You know what? I did like not. Like the J. Cole song. I did. No, I didn't. I kind of just, um, I don't even think I had, I had, like, seen one out of the rapper. Um... And, I'm, and this is crazy. I haven't even really thought about this experience to this conversation. So I'm like, I'm kind of reliving it right now. Um, yeah, I was, I was definitely uh, on the fly with it, for sure. 
Um, she definitely Did you know to squeeze the air out of the tip? No, 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 no. She definitely helped me. Yeah, she definitely helped me out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she was like, "Oh, the little virgin. He doesn't even know how to put a condom on." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she made she made sure she put it on, and she jumped on though. So at least she was saying she, she got me right. Yeah, yeah she you jump on that horse, you gotta ride it. Okay? Yeah, yeah. She was riding. She was doing her thing. <laughs> Is that your favorite position now to this day to have a girl on top? Because that was like your first real experience. Or like, how how does it work for you? Yeah. You know, I'm like a, uh, I'm very much like a, uh, like a, like a dancer when it comes to it. I like to communicate, you know, verbally, but I'm also listening too. So I'm, um, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I'm definitely hitting from the back for sure. Um, but you know, I like, ass, I like, yeah, I need to, I need to see that ass move. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm definitely, um, you know, uh, you know, my, my, my girl is, my girl is very pretty in the face now. Um, so, you know, I like, I, there's, there's times where I gotta flip back over. I gotta, I gotta look you gotta at the face. Yeah. You know, oh. I, I, I gotta look at the face. I gotta, you know, I gotta use my, my so, mouth. So Tyler, were there times that you had women you didn't want to look at their face? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. The ugly ones got yeah. to turn around. You know, so it's like you know, you gotta. I, I forget what I was reading. I think you know these memes pop across your your, your mm-hmm. time, timeline all the time. And someone had said like, you know, would you prefer like a you know a, a, a six in the face and a ten in the body or a real pretty face and like you know like a bad built body? Um, so I've definitely had that, you know, five in the face, you know what I'm saying? With a nice booty <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just make it do what it do. Turn, you know, hit the lights or turn the know, lights turn, off, turn, 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 turn mm-hmm. over or something. Flip over. <laughs> That's a, turn around, turn around. <laughs> oh no, bitch, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I find, um, you know, I, I find, I find lots of, uh, different characteristics about a woman sexy too. So even if she don't got it all together in the face, it's like, you know, there's, there's lots of things about a woman that, that, that get me right, turn me on. So, you know, if you're, you're smelling good, your hair is looking nice, you know what I'm saying? You're doing your thing. It's, uh, you know what I'm saying? We get past it. <laughs> I'm still laughing that you make have a you, turn around. <laughs> have you ever had a woman trick on, have you ever had a woman trick on you when you were younger? Like, what you mean by, like, what you mean trick on me? Like, like buy you gifts, pay for things, oh, you give mean, you money. Oh, you trick on me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, not when, not when I was, like, young, young, but when I started getting, um, I remember my, my girlfriend in high school was tricking on me a little bit. But then, you know what it was? When I got to L.A., when I got to L.A., um, I, I, like, I, I was introduced to, even before L.A., but, like, once I graduated from high school, I was introduced to the Cougars. You know what I mean? And the Cougars were, like, for sure tricking on me. Um, the 17-year-old Cougars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, not them Cougars, but I remember, um, well, we don't have to go into specifics. But, yeah, I've definitely had, um, you know what I'm saying, been a, been a part of that. And it's like, you gotta, be, you gotta be careful though. It's like when you receive, and I'm sure you, maybe you ladies go through this too, or if you have or not, I'm not sure. But like, you know, when you're receiving gifts, you know what I'm saying, without anything in return, you know, they're going to be expecting something. So I was a part of a scenario right. where, you know, <clears throat> she was giving me stuff and all of a sudden she broke it to me. She wanted, she wanted me to show up with her at like her like ex-husband's, like whatever. And I had oh, realized that, yeah, like I had realized that her ex-husband was like, he was like, you know, he, he was someone that was going to try to protect his space, if you understand what I'm saying. And so it was like mm-hmm. she was using me like a pawn. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, thank, thankfully, I was smart enough to understand. I said, hey, you know, what? I'm not going to I'm not going to do this anymore because, you know, if you put me in that scenario, I'm going to be forced to defend myself. And now right. you've got two men going crazy at each other, you know. So it's like whether they're expecting that or whether they're expecting she wanted that or, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. so for sure. Yeah. Um, He's like, I gotta fight every night to prove my love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but sure, I wasn't on that, so I, I had to. That's so weird. You know, one thing that um, came to my attention, you had a video that circulated, you had an interview where basically I think they asked you uh, about going 50 50 on a date, and your response I really liked. So I wanna ask you, what if a woman did sit down with a man and he was like, hey, um, here's my half, what you gonna do? What should she do? Hmm. You know, it's going to be different from, from woman to woman. You know, it's, it's like, it's, it's not one of those answers where one size fits all. You know what I mean? I think if, I think if the woman, if the woman has it in her head where, you know, say, we, let's, let's say for instance, she was raised in a household where she was taught that women aren't supposed to pay any bills. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, your daddy, your daddy teaches you that, you know, I'm always going to take care of you and I take care of your mother. And, you know, a man that's dating you should do the same. Right. And she's put in this scenario that you just presented. And the man says, hey, here's 50. Where's your 50? You know, if if she's about her morals and she doesn't want to do that, she has every right to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to pass on this. You know? 
She knows yeah. if that's, yeah. if that's, yeah. her, if no, that's her No, but I think that's funny to say. Like, I'm yeah. going to pass on that. <laughs> good. No, on Thanks, the, love. The, I'm good. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what if you just say, I'm uh, enjoy love or something? Yeah, enjoy, yeah, enjoy love. Enjoy I'm good, love, love um, enjoy. Yeah, I'm good, <laughs> love, enjoy. That's what it says. But it's like on the flip side, you know, in, in, a, in, a, pract- in a practical, um, you know, if we, if we look on the other side of the coin and we say, um, you know, we're going to be in this 50 50, um, you know, it's ha- you know, we're going to be a true uh, both feet in the relationship. We're going to give and take, you know, we're, we're, it's going to be a true 50 50 relationship. Um, and 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 you're okay with that you know you have every right to go ahead and accept that and you say okay babe here's my 50 and let's let's run it up like that or if it's 75 but not on the first date not on, not on the oh, first no. date though no That's no, how no. I feel. No, no, mm-hmm. no i think whoever asked the person on a date is supposed to pay like right. if i no, ask you like hey this yeah i think the guy about, is always supposed to pay yeah it depends but if you ask a guy date? out and you're like hey i want to take you out like i mean if it's his birthday yes if you say to a guy, I want to take you out and here's, and you set up everything, then I do feel like you should at least offer to pay because it was all your idea. I'm not going to be like, I want to take you out. Now pay for me. Yeah, See, I think I, that, um, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I've done that before where I'm like, okay, let's go out. And then the guy would be like, you're not paying this bill. And we're like, damn, they're yeah. trying to fight me to snatch Which the check. Fine. Which is fine, but I do think you should yeah. offer. Now, if you're in a relationship and you're like, let's go to the movies, then it's just whatever, whoever decides it. No, I got it this time. It doesn't matter. But I feel like on a first date, if you ask somebody on a date, that's who pays, right? Because it's yeah, your right, idea. Yeah. You're coming mm-hmm. up with the whole plan. I'm asking you to go somewhere. Imagine somebody asks you to do something and then make you pay for it. That's like- Yeah, for sure. I think, I think if we're talking about, you know, a date, um, your first date, if we're going to be specific with that, um, and again, to not not to go back to that interview, but like you know, I'm just I'm just a I'm just an old school person, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and I'm just I'm gonna take care of it. That's just the type of way I am. That's the type of person I am. Um, and I th- I think that it sh- I think that it should be like that. You know, there's right. um you know women women man y'all y'all give us a lot. You know what I mean? And it, it's unfortunate that I feel like most people don't give you the credit that you deserve. But like you know, if I if I were to give a woman a seed, you know, she she turns it into. <laughs> I like that game right there. <laughs> You know, if I, I was to give a woman, you know, my, uh, you know, my offspring, my seed, she, she literally grows it into a, into a human, into a child. Mm-hmm. You know, if I buy the house, she's going to create it into a, a home. home. Literally, ele- you really elevate us. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, the least I can do is go ahead and pick up, you know what I'm saying? Pick up the food tab. It's really not a big deal. So, um, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, I, 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 uh, you know, I, I root for, you know, men like myself to keep chivalry alive. Everyone always says, yeah, chivalry's dead, chivalry's dead. Now, don't go out and be, a, you know, get played and just get trampled all over. Right. But, you know, you, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be afraid to try to provide, to try to go ahead and pick that tab up. It's really not a big deal. I agree. Now, I have to be honest. I've never asked anyone on a date, so I have to never had to be in that scenario. <laughs> 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 have you guys ever asked anybody on a date, L'Oreal, Gigi? Have you ever asked a guy on a date? No. My boyfriend, like somebody that I was with, and it's more so like, I mean, oh, let's, let's go out. No, not yeah, but no, date. the first date, no. No, I've definitely, nope. like I said, in a relationship, I've definitely been like, let me take yeah. you out today. Mm-hmm. And again, mm-hmm. he still wouldn't let me pay, right. no matter no. what. We ate, he act like he was going to let me pay. And, and then, then he so like no. walked to the bathroom and paid. And I was like, like this defeats mm-hmm. the purpose, you right. know? What do, y'all feel, what do y'all feel about the woman proposing for marriage? I wouldn't do that either. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't I knock don't, anyone. No, yeah. Yeah, I don't I knock anyone. I think it's a new day and age. And sometimes they're stay at home dads now. You know yeah. what I mean? And the woman goes to work. So, yeah. but me personally, I would want somebody to propose to me. I wouldn't want to, I would feel like I'm not forcing, but I feel like yeah. what guy's really going to say no. It's going to make it. So that's my question. You're in a relationship. If your woman was to propose to you right now, would you accept the proposal? <laughs> How would you, you feel about set that? Set yourself up for this one. Yeah, you did. Uh, you feel about that. Yeah, you did. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh out loud like that. It's just like. <laughs> He's like, just yesterday, you know, my girlfriend proposed just, to me. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But, you know, you asking it back to me makes it real all of a sudden. So now I'm like putting myself in it. Um. You know, there's two, there's two scenarios. There's like, there's like, um, you know, so, so first of all, I don't, I don't know if marriage is for me. Me and my girlfriend talk about that often. Um, so I don't know if I'm, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get married in life, like, period. Uh, but if I'm in this scenario, um, I'm definitely going to be the one getting on a knee. Now, if we are in a blue moon, you know, the world turned on its head and now my girl gets on one knee and proposes to me, <laughs> <Blue> uh, <laughs> then, uh, which I, which is one of my favorite beers, by the way. 
Um, <laughs> um, but I, I think that if I think if we were alone, um, in in whatever way in whatever way I could that came to me in the moment, I would try to articulate that you know I, I want to be the one to propose to you. So it's not like I'm saying no, but allow me to be the one that does this. Allow me to to do this the right way. Um, I think it would be important if I was going to say yes to articulate that I do want to get married. It's not like I'm saying you know no. Um, but it's just that I want to do this the right way, the way right. that I, I see it going down. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it I don't know like how to no. take that. Hold <laughs> that, let the dough stack is what it is. Okay, <laughs> nigga threw to it, me, I threw to it back. You know what it is? I just, I just feel, I feel, I just feel weird. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm down here, so right, check it out. You put that, and I'm like, yeah. Like, that just don't, I don't know. Look at like, my ring, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> and then you want to see you on Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, ain't no, all my ain't single no fellas, that, all my you know single fellas. Saying, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I would just prefer it to be the other way around. That's all. No, no offense mistaken. to anybody who does that. Am I mistaken or your parents have been together? They're still married, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. So my parents are still together. It's been, um, I think they've been married for, I was four when they got married. Um, so it's my mother and my and my stepfather. I only I, I don't call him that. I call him it's my it's my dad. Dad, right, uh, right. Okay, he's raised okay. me. Yeah, he's had me even since I was like three. You know, they were together for a while and then they got definitely married. your um, dad. So yeah, the, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but just for descriptive purposes, like yes. you know, I'm just just calling it out. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know, my mom, and my dad been married for um, so I'm 33, so 29 years now. Wow. So I have, I have a I have a great and they they still leave each other you know little notes on the you know on the magnet on the, oh, the fridge no, and stuff. So I have crazy. a really great. Yeah, I have a really great example of what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. What are some sweet things that you do in your relationship? Um, you know, you always got to be making that effort. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, um, you know, there, there are certain things that um, that are like, you know, planned. I try to make sure that, um, you know, we have date night often. You know, we don't just get caught up at work because I work a lot and she works a lot. Um, so it's easy. It's easy to just get it's easy to have your date night be a premiere or something like that, or to have mm-hmm. it be like a, amongst a lot of other people We're going out popping bottles or something like that. We're having fun, but it's like, you know, I try to always carve out, um, you know, intimate time for us. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, whether it's, whether it's something as simple as going to the movies or, you know, you know, picking out our favorite restaurant or, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe, you know, renting the boat for a day or doing something on the water. Um, but there's also things, um, you know, things that happen in the spur of the moment. Um, you know, certain certain my my girl is a uh is a very cerebral person so there's certain conversations that i always make sure that we have um that i feel like she's not having anywhere else in life that she wants to touch on um so she's uh we're, we're very much uh what do they call it? like like uh like sapiosexuals also mm-hmm. right and then, okay. like you get turned on by the mind right um, yeah so there's 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 uh all over the spectrum of certain things that i do you know gotta make sure i beat it down right you feel me <laughs> um, like, no, just, you know what? Since you guys are CPOs, he's <laughs> yeah. like, I'm serious. Since you guys are CPOs, <laughs> no, sexuals, do you ever have um, yeah. tantric sex? Tantric sex, uh, enlighten me. Laura, yeah, oh, we just had know. a clubhouse about this. We did have a clubhouse about it. Yeah, it what was is um, t- tantric sex. Tantric it? sex that involves a lot of breathing and closeness without touching, and it's when you um, feel each other's sexual energies without actually yeah. touching each other, and it it brings you to orgasm if you do it right. Um, so our orgasms are always like hands on. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> our <laughs> orgasms come from the penis and the vagina. Yeah. Uh, but, wow. but it I, sounds I, like a FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. No, but I can I can say that um I, I can say that like you know we take that step very seriously though. You see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that that part is not glossed over. It's not brushed over. Um, and I can say that like you know y- younger in my life it was a it was a space that was brushed over. You see what I'm saying? Like even after um. You know, even after my experience, you know, that I told you about when I was 14, like even even like young 20s, it's like, you know, you're so worried about getting in there, getting to action that like, you know, you're mm-hmm. glossing over some of the most some of the most important, intimate you know, parts. intimate parts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. These really. And I had to, you know, I, I had to learn that there's, uh, you know, just over my experience in life, I had to learn there's a big difference between like men and women. You know what I'm saying? How we get there, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And like and like for a man, you know, a man can you know, we're, we're very simple. You know what I'm saying you, wear, you, wear, <laughs> you yeah. wear the right dress. We ready to go, and it's, it's there. Um, and you know, you know, y'all, uh, not that y'all have enlightened all the time. Yeah, and y'all have enlightened me, and and 
you know, um, helped me understand that there's a whole other side to it. Even even right now, you guys are putting me on game right now because I didn't know that it had a term for it. Mm. What's it called again? Tantric. 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 That's Tantric. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did you uh, and your girlfriend, and then, did you approach her? Did she approach you? She approached me. Um, she approached okay. me. Yeah, yeah, she was, she's very. She might be planning that right. proposal now. She yeah, already got like the proposal coming. Oh, oh, oh! I have to tell her not to watch this and get any ideas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she had so funny. Me. She's, uh, she's a very, she's a very direct one. She wants to be, um, but um, it's she's that she's she's not really she's not really like that. Um, she approached me. I mean, at least not, at least not from what I know. You know what I mean. But this day she was, and she and she um, and it wasn't like she came and said, "Hey, listen, I want to fuck." It wasn't like that. But it was like you know, she she made her way over and made it a point to come, you know, initiate the conversation. You know, and from there, you know, I take it from there. But that initial, you know, opening of the door was, uh, was definitely was her. her. Was her for sure. Yeah. But how did you move from the space of being like just talking to being in a committed relationship? So we went through. Uh, we went through a long period of time where we were friends. Um, so she approached me. Um, it, uh, we went on a couple of dates. Uh, you know, we were intimate with each other um, and developed a friendship that lasted for a long time because we worked, we worked in the same industry. Um, so it was like we were just always, we were around each other a lot. And, um, and it just organically developed into a place where you know, I was, I was really the one, I'll keep it real. I was the one that kind of just, you know, I have these epiphanies a lot of time in life, a lot of times in life. You know, I had one on the East coast. I said, you know what, Tyler, it's time to move. It's not for me anymore. You know what I'm saying? I, I want, I want something different. Um, so I had another epiphany. I said, um, you know, I kind of all of a sudden started, I, I don't know if this is good or bad, but, uh, I started thinking about like, if I were to, you know, cause she was, she was easily accessible to me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I, I could, I could, I could, uh, I could reach out and, and have her if I wanted to. And I think because of that, I was taking, I was taking her for granted. Mm-hmm. And I kind of had this epiphany where I was like, man, I was like, this is, she's, she's like someone that like, I want to be with. And I, I, I don't know what I would do if I, if I went away, you know, I, I work, I work, uh, you know, away or often. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm in Atlanta five months out of the year. I got a new show on Amazon coming out where I'm shooting in New York uh, five months out of the year. So it's like, I would hate if I came back and she's booed up with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It, would hit me diff- it would hit me different if like I seen her on someone else's arm. So it's not like it was a territorial thing. Like, I just don't want no one else to have you. I had just realized that I want to have you. You know what right. I'm saying? So I, I went in that this time I was direct and I said, you know, um, l- l- you know, I want to be with you. Let's be with each other. You know, in, in, in different words, but that was the message. What about kids? You said no marriage, but what about kids? Uh, we have a child together. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. You ain't tell us you was daddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a, a uh, boy or I got boy a, or girl. I have a son. I have a son. Okay. Nice. So when Listen, do you to, think that it, it it's good to keep things private and that's why your relationship lasts? Yeah, yeah. And I think I think you chose the correct word. People often talk about like, you know, so why do you keep it a secret? It's secret, not a secret. No, you see what I'm saying? It's like, if it was a secret, I would have just lied to you right there. You right. I mean? mm-hmm. um, but it's like, you know, it's, I, I've, I've found that, you know, working in a public space, you know, what I do for a living, and, and you ladies know, you know, well, what we're doing right now, this is work right now, but this mm-hmm. is going to be broadcasted to everyone, right? So right. we work in this public space. Mm-hmm. And when you work in this public space, you know, you end up having extracurriculars that are in the public space. And if you look at the whole spectrum, you know, like 80, 90 percent of your, your, your life is lived out where people are, are watching you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I've, 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 uh, I've understood for a long time and I've experienced this, that having, having a space that's private is mm-hmm. very beneficial and really helps to be able to unplug. You know, for me, especially as a, you know, especially as a black man, you know, to go into the world, the last thing that I want um, from going uh, like to uh, from being at war with the world every single day is to come home for round two. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I like to have calm waters at home, and uh, and I think I think being private helps that. And uh, you know, I got my my girlfriend understands that, um, and so it's just it's just a great fit. You know, I've had girlfriends in the right. past that didn't understand that, and they want it, they want everything to be public. They don't understand why we can't publicize everything. And right. you won't see my kid. You won't see my kid on my everybody. IG. 
Yeah, exactly. And you won't see my kid on my IG the same way you won't see like my parents on my IG. I just want to keep. Um, I've chosen to keep the uh, my, my private life private, and and everything mm-hmm. else like we can we can talk and we can chat, and I talk to my right. people on my IG, and it's like we can we can do all that over here in this space. Mm-hmm. You know? I feel that and I respect it. And that's what makes people yeah. come up with like all their own stories that they create. You know, yeah. I saw they were trying yeah, to say sure. that you were gay. And I, and I was like, well, really? I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. But it's like, you know, they, they, they you know, I remember when I first um, I remember when I first started out, uh, I, I was seeing it here and there um, for, for, what, for whatever reason, people were associating it with um like my first show i came out on a tyler perry show and like for, for whatever reason he gets a rap like that and i know tyler personally he's not gay you know what i'm saying but it's like you know being i was you know i was seeing around him and all of a sudden it was just rubbing off on me and people thought like i was gay or something like that and then i remember um i had taken i don't know if i'd taken a i don't know if, i don't know what it was but I, i'd done something i was on the set of peace alley and uh maybe i was with clifford or i was like maybe i think i was taking a picture with uh alphonse who plays little murder and um and people start off with the gay thing again. I think like I think if you have a space like you were saying, Angela, if you have a space that people can't figure out, they, they mm-hmm. may just tag they it with whatever they can. They can just yeah. create they can create a judgment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So right. I will like, say about Tyler Perry. Perry. My thing about mm-hmm. Tyler Perry, I never think that he's gay. He just know how to pick a fine man to cast in his <laughs> shows. And stuff. If he don't pick the most nice looking guys, like an array of them, and I'd be like, where the hell does he find them at? I want to <laughs> hang out with Tyler Perry so I can find he got all of them. Yeah, he got all the fine <laughs> men. The that's why ones. people think that, because he has a good eye for looks as well, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what it is. That, for and, man. And, yeah. and he plays Medea so well. <laughs> people can't get over that. People can't get over the fact that he plays a woman so well. He does say. He does say. He does play the shit out of Medea. I'm mad he, he ended that because I, I enjoy Medea. I think Medea coming back. That's just a had to pause her for a little bit and then she'll yeah, come back. Medea gonna make a return. Yeah, the return for sure. Medea. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You know, the yeah, only absolutely. thing is, as, a, as an actor, you just have to make sure that you truly understand what you're stepping into. And if you step into it, you have to give 100%. You cannot, mm-hmm. you know, Will Smith talks about it often. In his first role, I forget what it was, but he played a gay role. Mm-hmm. The six degrees, about, six, degrees six degrees of separation. Six degrees of separation. I think so. Mm-hmm. And he talks about, in hindsight, he wishes he would have just d- did it all the way because in the moment, he was worried about what his boys were going to think and all mm-hmm. these outside circumstances. And he actually didn't do it. They had to cut around it to wow. make it look real. And it, it kind of takes the performance down a little bit. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's what like, about, you know, what about, about nudity? Often. What about full frontal nudity? So, I, I, again, I would do it. it would, so if I was going to do full frontal, it has to be on something like a P-Valley. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where it's, it's done tastefully. You don't see, you don't see it. You know, you, you, you'll see it there and you'll see the girls get, you know, fully, there, there's full nudity on that show, but it's done, it's done, you know, it's done just to, to support the story. It's right. not done right. in, a, in just a out of nowhere. Like, here's the oh, there yeah, it, here is. Yeah. Yeah. it is. It's a penis. <laughs> Look at it. Tyler, yeah, exactly. Tyler, what if they tell you that we want you to be limp and then everybody's going to be like, oh my God, his penis is so small. And then- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you got to no, ask him if he's a show or a grower first. He might be a, he might be a shower. <laughs> we need to do this limp penis Listen, scene. I'm, 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 a, I'm a shower. I'm a shower. Oh, okay. Okay. So you okay. good. Right, You're showing and growing. growing. So you got it. So listen. <laughs> no worries. P Valley, so the milk like, version. <laughs> D Valley, D Valley. <laughs> so that's interesting too, because you know this was this was the first show that um, in this in this season I was not new. Um, we were getting into Diamond storyline, and we weren't there yet. You know who knows? Maybe second season when you go home and you Ooh. see who he's with, or he's coming out the shower or something like that. When you see him, you know, in his life, you know, you actually never seen Diamond outside of the club. No, right? you have no? not. Right. Exactly. So but you was about to get it in with Mississippi in there. You didn't have yeah, to get yeah. out of there, though. You don't got to leave. Yeah, right under those yeah, bleachers. We'll go, right to, we'll go to the break room. Yeah, to the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, we was ready to fight her after. I don't, I don't want to spoil it, just in case everybody didn't watch yet. But was. we was ready to jump her as a unit, like, because mm-hmm. we like, girl, what are you doing? Right. How dare <laughs> you? I think that um don't give so it a D. So real quick to, to wrap that up because I wanted to touch it on touch on it real quick. So this is my first time. That's what um, she said. Being being, <laughs> being a part of a show that had uh, so much nudity. So I had seen the nudity writers and the nudity clauses and stuff like that. So there are certain things that you can show and certain things you can't show. So I didn't know if you guys know this, or if you ladies know this, but you're actually not allowed to show a fully erect penis. Oh, I've never mm-hmm. seen one now that you so said you that. So you can't show a dick on, on hard like that on TV. On TV. So, yeah, so it's like on TV. <laughs> so on TV, you're actually only going to see limp dick. Yeah. Why? Like, yeah. That's, like when, that's not like, fair. Hey, like when, what um, is. what's yeah. his name, Corbin, when he was in the in the cloud and he was yeah. there naked in the cloud. Actually, I heard yeah. that was a fake penis. Virgo told me that that wasn't even uh, his real penis. But Spoiler it wasn't alert. hard. It wasn't <laughs> Look hard. at his face. He's like. Uh, 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 <laughs> you wouldn't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, but it wasn't. But, but, it, but yeah. if you pay attention to <laughs> when you watch it, he it wasn't hard. He was just laying there and it was just laying there. So that's, I wonder that's why really, they would make that a rule. That's so weird. Like, why can't so, there, a penis? Because that's so porn. Many, yeah, yeah, I guess that's considered porn. Yeah, and like, same mm-hmm. thing with the, you know, with the female anatomy. You're not allowed to show the lips. You're not like, there's certain, you can show yeah. it, but not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the under- yeah, not up in so, there. Underneath. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't you get can up in there. You can show the front, yeah. but you can't show like right. really in between. As so ladies, you can't get wet. No you pink at the pink, <laughs> okay? Yeah, you can't, you can't really, you can't really get all of it like that. So it's like, there's certain rules. There's certain rules to the game. Um, but to get into, you know, Mississippi now, one thing that I can say about that, because there was a lot of reaction on that last scene where she pulled mm-hmm. the gun on Diamond. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of it. Um, so, I hate it. <laughs> we were so mad at her. <laughs> now, real quick, before I get into it, what do you think, like, what were, you, what were y'all so upset about? What do you think that the audience was feeling in that moment? Because she was still defending him. You were defending her, her. against him. And then she yeah. came in there defending him and pulled a gun out on you. Like, and I get abuse yeah. and all that. I understand. Trust yeah. me, I'm more, I overstand. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah. we wanted y'all to hook up. You know yeah. what I mean? So I and think we it was also just, wanted him to die. The guy. We, we wanted you to whip him. his ass or we wanted her to kill him. Okay? And then I think because he's a white ass. boy, too, like, it didn't help. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. I think Jake that... Jake Paul. Um, yeah, Jake Paul, no bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> a- a- Angela, did you, see the, did you see that thing? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Do, do you, not- you feel similar? 
Yeah, I mean, of course. I think as a woman, and then we look at you like that's the you know yeah, that's the, good the guy. guy. Go to him, yeah, you the hero. The guy. You wear and the then you put your, and sure. then you also put yourself in that position. Like, what would you do? But then, of course, yeah, we yeah. never know what we would do in real life. But from watching it, and I always think it's from the outside in. You're watching something, and that's what makes these characters more complex. Because yeah. anybody could watch something and say, "If that was me, right, this is yeah. what I would do." But it's but you got the inside in scoop, so let us know what's tea. Okay, so here's my thing on it. Um, so I have to give, I, again, I got to just give a hats, my hats off and a shout out to Katuri Hall because, you know, as a writer, she's very specific and she's the one that really made this thing go. Um, you know, get it, got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. You know, she's the one that really drives this thing. So mm-hmm. she's the one who wrote that scene. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's so easy to give the audience what they want in that What scene. they want. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and here true. comes, Di- here comes Diamond, the knight in shining Save armor, he's going to ride you're going to save the day, you mm-hmm. know, but if you look at, you know, that would be just doing what the audience wants. That's not actually staying true to the story. Mm. That's you what know, made and, it dope. And, mm. Yeah. And like, <laughs> if you look at, if you look at, you know, the human condition, it's like, if you, if you look at, uh, unfortunately, a lot of these people, you know, a lot of times it's, it's females, but even men, a lot of times these abused go back to the abuser. Mm-hmm. Like for, for whatever reason, it's crazy. It's like, it's like something's, you know, something psychological. Stockholm going syndrome. On there. Yeah, it's yeah, like a Stockholm syndrome. Exactly. So for her to keep it real in that moment, even though everyone wanted the opposite, it's mm-hmm. like, man, my hat's off to her as a storyteller because I know lots of storytellers that would have just given the audience what they, what wanted, they wanted for a couple for a couple ratings. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And she kept but it. Real. She kept yeah. Because yeah. then think of the reaction that you had is so much stronger. Because it's a visceral reaction, do. people, yeah. Yeah, because if y'all fucked, they just would have been like, "Oh yeah, we wouldn't be talking about that right now." Probably would have yeah. just been another love scene. But like you said, and think about all of us. How many times we've defended our man that was treating us like mm-hmm. shit from yeah, everybody else? And the, and the more people go ask somebody, the more defensive you become of mm-hmm. that exactly. person, even when they don't. Mm-hmm. But being from yeah. the outside, if I was Mississippi, we would have shot that white man, buried him, and then went and had sex with something. Like, <laughs> <Hello. laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna have well, to, uh, we'll have to bring you on season two. Let's go. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi definitely need to be on there. Yeah, by the Gigi way. gonna be in the damn so, pole showing what him you, what to do. What you don't know about me is I created the last dance. Ten years ago at Magic City, I retired, and we named my retirement party the Last Dance. I was there <laughs> at Magic City, mm-hmm. and it, and it, it and it became a thing. So after that, wow. every time a dancer um, left the club, she had a Last Dance. It was the Last Dance. Yeah, uh, wow, me, Virgo, and Simone was the Trinity. You see how you guys had the Trinity? At oh Miami? yeah, the whole Trinity. So yeah. so in Magic City, we were called the Snack Pack. Snack Pack. And we were their very first feature performance crew. Like we wow. started that whole feature performance group performance That's thing crazy. in strip clubs. And um, again, uh, Katori even said in one of her press junkets that you know she created that night. Um, at the club to kind of mimic the Sunday night that uh, Mercedes had. She created that yeah. to kind of mimic times at Magic City where, and she actually said my name, Gigi McGuire yeah. would pack out the club. Um, yeah, yeah. So, hey, so, go yeah. ahead, Gigi. Okay. <laughs> Look, and now you got a hot spot on you and all that. Right, you see that? I learned something from you. <laughs> That's it. I remember my first time going to Magic City and I walked in and Gigi was in there working and she just jumped off whatever she was doing and came to give me a hug on Nick. And Titties all on her. <laughs> I was like, and I was with my friends and I was like, I was like, this is my first time in Magic City. And then I walked in the DJ was like, Angela, he's here. And then Gigi runs over. They're like, girl, you sure this your first time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I, Gigi lives there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still. Now, we gotta get you, we gotta get, have you ever thought about, um, you ever thought about coming, coming onto the set? I would love Just to. Yeah, yeah, I would on, love on, to. On season two. On season two, we're gonna film. We're gonna film it this summer, so hopefully the um, you know, the pandemic should be uh, if not all the way gone, like you know, much yeah. more subsided. So like, there's yeah, no pandemic in show. Atlanta. I heard it's not. Uh, we're, yeah, we're open. That shit, shit done skipped Atlanta. <laughs> 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 but listen, this is really funny, Tyler. We do appreciate you. You were really amazing. I didn't know what great. to expect when we yeah, did this interview, it. but we actually had a really great time with you. So we yeah, appreciate so. you being so. Open I knew he was fun because he was um, break dancing at Karen Civil's uh, oh, birthday not dinner. <laughs> <laughs> No, we have we have fun though. We have fun. We had party, so though. much fun at Karen Civil's birthday party. It was a great time. Shout out to Karen. <laughs> no.
But yes, so so much love and support to you, and we can't wait for the next season. We can't wait for the Amazon. What's the series coming on Amazon Prime? So it's called it's called uh, Harlem, and it's mm-hmm. brought to you. Uh, Tracy Oliver is creating it, um, and Megan Good is on it. Uh, oh, that's my sister. Grace oh. Grace Byers is on it, and um, you know a, a few other phenomenal ladies and myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, so we're going to resume production um, in three weeks. So nice. we were doing it, but we've been we've been on a, on hiatus with the pandemic for like nine months now. Yeah, yeah, so we just figured out a way to get back on there. So we're gonna we're gonna resume. Fire. Tyler, you are living a life. It's always a bunch of phenomenal women in yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I appreciate you it. You are living the life. Nice a life. <laughs> but um, man, before before we before we bounce real quick, I just want to say, you know, I've been uh, you know, I've been I've been following you for a long time. Um, you know, and I had I had I had a chance to um, you know, obviously get get on get on uh with you here and um and and i'm sorry real quick it's, it's we've been we've been friends since karen's party but i've i, I didn't want to butcher your name like yeah i think everybody my, messes up my name it's l'oreal name. Yeah, it's, like <laughs> yeah. it's okay, just so spelled so messed up <laughs> so it's like you know it's, it's been extended to l'oreal and also gg and um you know to have you ladies you know what i'm saying uh you know repping the way you are and continuing to follow your dreams it's uh man it's inspiring so Again, keep keep doing what y'all doing because I'm a fan of all three of you, and thank you for opening up your platform to allow me to come and just um you know what I'm saying talk my shit and just just be with y'all.